In this video, I'll show you how to use the map change script to quickly move the player ribbon from one map to another, and I'll also show you how a player can change to a different map themselves. All right, let's dive in. Before we go any farther, do need to throw to this claimer that we are using the API, so this does require a pro subscription to Roll20. All right, now, Nick, why would I want to use the map change script? I mean, I can just drag the player ribbon from one map to another, that's pretty easy. Well, yes, it is. However, you've probably noticed that as your campaign grows and grows, and grows, you can wind up with a whole lot of maps in your game. And what I found I was doing was I started trying to like cluster the maps that I was using regularly into this first little section here. So I was constantly kind of moving things back and forth and around. And that works for a little while until your players gain the ability to teleport. And then all bets are off. You never know where they're going to go and when they're going to want to go there. So you might have your handful of maps ready to go right here, and then your wizard says, you know what, I want to plane shift back to someplace else, and that map is way over here. And the challenge with that is you can't scroll with the player ribbon. You know, I, I hit the edge here, and, and I can't go any further. So now my players get this hopping experience where we lurch from one map to another, until I'm able to finally get to the map that they want to teleport to. So what map change allows us to do instead is just type in the command exclamation point MC. And if you want to move all the players to a particular map, you say move all dash dash target and then the name of the map that you want to move them to. So for example, I'm going to move the player ribbon to this temple grounds. And there we go. Now the player ribbon is there. The thing to note that's very important here is that you need to specify the name of the map exactly as it appears here in the page name. So the case matters and spacing matters. Let's say I want to move my players to the world map. All right. So the world map is lowercase w capital M. You can see that right there. I'm going to put it as capital W capital M. And you see nothing happens. And in fact, there's a message from map change saying that world map not found. So I need to change that to be world map. There we go. Now the player ribbon has been sent there. The other thing that map change allows you to do is move an individual player to a specific map. So if just one of your party teleports away or gets trapped in the phantom zone or something like that, you probably know you can just drag their avatar onto that map and that player's view goes to that specific location, but you can do the same thing with map change. And it's a similar command. You just say MC and it's just move target and we'll send them to the temple grounds too. But to specify which player we're sending, we're going to put in dash dash player and then the name of the player that we're sending to that map. So for me, I'm going to send N player here. So we're going to say N player. And there we go. Now you see N player's avatar moved to the Temple Grounds map. If I want to bring them so that they are now on the same page as the player ribbon again, the command for that would be exclamation point MC for map change, rejoin, and then dash dash player, N player. And... There you go. Now you see that their avatar has vanished and they've rejoined on the player ribbon. Now, one thing about map change that I really like is that it gives players the ability to change maps too. And you may be thinking, well, whoa, why would I want that? Well, you know, think about it. There, there are times when your party is, say, in town and they split up, right? You've got some that go to the tavern, some that go shopping, and you as the DM can really only field one piece of the party at a time. So you've got other players who are now essentially idle. Well, if you have like a world map or a landing screen or some other page like a conspiracy board or a job board or something like that that the other players can investigate, you can give them the ability to go to that page. So, for example, you see I've got my world map here 
if I want my players to be able to view that world map at any time, I can create a macro that looks like this. I've created one here already called view world map. And it's just using that same command that I showed earlier, exclamation point MC move dash dash target world map. And then I just make that visible to all my players. So now let me put my players onto the temple grounds for right now. All right, so they're there. They're on the, here we are, we're on the temple grounds. And let's say this is just a role playing situation and one of the characters isn't really involved. So they can click on view world map and that moves them to the world map and they can investigate and see kind of where we are and how long do they think it's going to take us to get to the next part of the continent or, or whatever it is. And when they're ready to return to the party, they're going to click that return to party button that I've got right here. And that moves them back to the temple grounds map. And the macro for that, the return to party macro, is right here. And you can see it's just that MC rejoin command. And it's without the player flag because if you run it as a player, it just rejoins you back to the player ribbon. And that's it. That's really simple. Again, it's just that one line there. And it's been made visible to all players. Now, some of you may be saying, well, what's stopping my players from just jumping all over every map that I have? That is a totally valid question, and I will address that in a minute. I want to show you one other thing first, and that is the map change menu, which is accessed just by typing MC menu. And this shows you a list of all the pages that are in your game. So you can quickly click on any one of these to move your players to those as well. So if I want to send my players to the random battle swamp page, I can just click on this all right here. And that moves the players to that page. So if I scroll now, you see the ribbon is on the random battle swamp page. If I want to move them to uh, the temple basement again, I can just click again on all. And that moves the player ribbon back to the temple basement. If I want to move just one player, I can do that too, just like we saw with the commands. But I can say, all right, I'm going to send them to the start page. I'm going to say other. And that lets me pick, okay, which player are we sending? All right, so I'm going to send uh, end player there. And there we go. Now they've been sent to that particular page. So your players are going to have access to that same menu, right? They can come in here and they can type in exclamation point MC menu as well. And then they can see all these things. But you'll notice they don't have the same buttons that you do. So while they can click on any one of these to be taken to that page, they can't move everybody else and they can't move a specific player. They can only move themselves. So what we'll talk about now is how we can restrict players from moving to particular maps. You can either turn off the access for a player entirely so they can't move around at all, or you can choose which maps the players will be able to access. So let's take a look at how to do that. All right, so back over in my GM view, let's start out with how you would limit which maps a player has access to. And I'm going to go to my main game page here. And if I go to settings, API scripts, and I find map change, and I should have mentioned earlier, map change is part of the standard script library. So you can just install it. No need to uh, go and grab it from anywhere else. But on the map change tab, you're going to see that there are a handful of options that you can configure. And by default, you're, it's going to look like this, where you're going to have a marker, a hide marker, and an inverted marker checkbox. And this one will be off by default. Essentially, what these allow you to do is say, OK, any map that is prefixed with bracket GM bracket is a map that is hidden from the players. That is one that is not visible to the players in that menu. So if we look in my list here, I have one of those called GMN3333. Okay, it's uh, going to be a secret lab that my players can can find. It's going to have a bunch of cybernetic type monsters. All right, but that map has the GM prefix associated with it, which means that it is hidden from my player's view. So if I go back to my player view now and I run my command MC menu and we look through here, we see that the N333 map is not there. All right, there's a my N33 map, which was one I was just messing around with. 
that one is there, but the other one, the one that I prefixed with the GM bracket notation is not listed. So you can keep your players from having access to certain maps. You can also completely remove maps from this list by marking them as hidden. So right here, you'll notice there's a hide marker, bracket hide. And what that does is puts the map in this list of hidden maps. So if I click on this, it'll actually give me a list of the maps that I have listed as hidden. Like the only one I have right now is Whitechapel. Um, that's this one right here. You see it's prefaced with hide Whitechapel. And that's just keeping it out of the list, right? I can still move the players there, but maybe you've got a, a subsection of maps that are not ones that you want to include in the move process yet. Maybe you're just still tinkering with them or, or something like that. And you just don't want them to take up space in the sidebar here. You could mark them as hidden and then they're not going to show up. Now, if you're like me and you discovered this script after you've already set up a big chunk of your campaign and you're looking at this going, whoa, that's a lot of pages I'm going to have to go through and change because maybe you only want your players to be able to get to a couple of the pages rather than, you know, all 50 of them. This inverted marker box should switch things so that the pages flagged with GM become visible to the players and the rest are hidden. But unfortunately, that box appears to be broken. There was a forum post that I found online that, that said that the author of the script realized there was an issue. It doesn't look like that ever got fixed. But honestly, I, I don't think that's that big of a deal because your players aren't going to know about the MC menu command unless you tell them. Because if you go into the player's view here and I look at their macros, they can't view the body of the macros that you've assigned to them. So they don't know what command is being used. And if you did find out that one of them was abusing it, like let's say that, you know, you're uh, in here, you're, you're in your game and you pull this down and you see that one of your players is, hey, they're over on a map that they're not supposed to be on. They must have figured out how to get there. You can block players from using the MC command until you're ready for them to. And that's right here this toggle block command. So when you run the MC menu command, you'll notice there's this toggle block option. If I click that, okay, which player are you gonna block? Well, I'm gonna block N player, submit, okay? And now if we go back to N player and I try to return to party, I get a message saying that I have been blocked from using map change. So now my player can't just jump around wherever they want to. So you don't have to turn this off for all your players. You could just turn it off for one who was abusing map change. But like I said, honestly, it's it's unlikely that they're going to even know that this is the script that you're running unless you tell them. Of course, if you want to untoggle the block, you say toggle block again. You choose the same player that will unblock them. And now the player can return to the party. Now, one other thing I want to mention is that when you add new pages to your campaign, you need to refresh map changes internal list of pages. So what I mean by that right now, if I go in here and I create a new page and I call it my cool new page. Okay. And now I run the MC menu command. My cool new page is not listed here. What I need to do is run this refresh command. And now when I run MC menu, you see, there's my cool new page. So anytime you add new pages to your campaign, you do need to refresh map change just so that it has that in its internal list of pages. So just one last tip before we sign off today, you know, if you use a break screen in your campaign, like you know, you're going to take a 10 minute break in the middle of the game and you have a special screen that you display for your players while you're on that break, I recommend you create a macro kind of like what I've done here called send players to break screen. And it's just the MC move all command going to my break screen. And then I'm just going to put that in my my bar here and I'm going to split my screen so that I have both my players view and my DM view here. So now I'm going to say, all right, I'm just going to send my players to the break screen. And there you go. You see my players have moved to the break screen. And then when I'm ready, I can move them back to whatever map that I want them to just by running MC menu again and saying, okay, we're going into the temple basement and I'm going to send everybody there. Right, and now 
My players are all in the temple basement again. So there you go. That's the map change script. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.